For many, the beginning of post-secondary education is considered an important transition from the period of adolescence to adulthood. While it certainly is a significant step, most people are probably not aware that the human brain does not finish developing until around age 22. The prefrontal cortex, the area of the brain responsible for higher level abstract cognition and in the control and modulation of cognitive processes such as inhibition, cognitive monitoring, and effective control, is still experiencing synaptic pruning. The basic idea is that the brain starts out with more synapses than it needs and only those that are used will continue on to adulthood. During periods of development, things we experience, such as stress, can alter the brain. Stress occurs when an individual evaluates or forms a cognitive appraisal of their environment and perceives it to be personally taxing or exceeding their resources in a way that threatens their well-being. University can also be a very stressful period of one's life. Some common stressors include finances, including student loans, tuition, and managing a budget, academic issues, sexual experiences, romantic breakup, and the transition from the family home to independent living. Everyone experiences stress from time to time. Sometimes people may not even recognize that they are stressed. Stress can take many forms. Some signs of stress include feeling anxiety, feeling agitated, headaches, muscle pain or tension, Stress can manifest itself differently depending on the person. For example, one person may not want to eat and have a lot of trouble sleeping, whereas another person may eat a lot and sleep more than usual when stressed. The sympathetic nervous system is involved in the stress response. The sympathetic nervous system acts without our permission in the sense that we generally cannot consciously control its activation. When a person encounters something stressful, the sympathetic nervous system activates the fight or flight response. In this response, a part of the brain called the hypothalamus communicates with the sympathetic nervous system and tells it to stimulate the adrenal gland, which is a gland right above the kidneys. The adrenal gland then releases a neurotransmitter called epinephrine into the blood. Epinephrine is responsible for activating the cells in the brain and body and getting the body ready to fight or flee when in the face of stress. The other part of the stress response involves the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, which is a gland closely linked to the hypothalamus, and the adrenal glands. First, the hypothalamus releases a hormone known as CRH and causes the pituitary gland to release another hormone known as ACTH. ACTH stimulates the adrenal glands to release a hormone called cortisol into the blood. Cortisol is responsible for activating cells in the brain and body so that they can deal with the stress, but it also causes the deactivation of certain systems in the body that are not helpful in times of stress. Although stress can be adaptive and experienced for a small amount of time, if it is chronic, it can damage a part of the brain called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a structure that helps to detect cortisol in the blood and stop the release of cortisol. However, when too much cortisol is present, it can damage the hippocampus, which causes it to be less efficient at detecting cortisol. Because chronic stress can damage the hippocampus, it may impair the ability to learn. Also, in several disorders, a shrunken hippocampus is common. The hippocampus is also related to cognition and emotion, so chronic stress may have an effect on these things as well. If the stress hormone cortisol continues to be released, it will continue deactivating particular systems in the body. This can impact the immune system and make people more likely to get sick, lead to muscle loss, and cause people to be tired. Stress during any period of life can have long-term negative effects, but studies have linked adolescent stress to an increased risk for psychopathology. Some particular issues include substance abuse disorders, depression and other internalizing disorders, 
and anxiety, especially associated with sporadic, unpredictable stress. Although chronic stress can be harmful to people's brain, body, and mood, there are ways of dealing with stress. Exercise is one method that can help reduce the amount of stress people feel. It has been found that exercise increases the chemicals in the brain that cause people to feel good. By doing this, exercise reduces negative feelings associated with stress and can help reduce the effects of stress. Relaxation techniques may also reduce stress, and if used on a regular basis, they may prevent stress from becoming work. Some calming techniques include breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, and massage.